You've probably used the GraphQL code generator to automatically generate hooks for your GraphQL client using an applicable plugin. If we explore the plugin for React Apollo hooks, we can see here that we have some schema, then we have the operations inside of our project, and then we have the GraphQL code generator configuration. We generate this new file and we run these plugins. And we can see here that it generates the use query hooks, and this is specific to Apollo. A lot of this code is boilerplate, so we want to explore using a new technique called type document node that generates just the document node that describes the EST for our query that we can use with a variety of different front end clients. If we explore the plugin hub for GraphQL code generator and we search for document node, we can see here that we have a plugin type document node. In this video, we'll go ahead and install this and see what this looks like working with Apollo, Urkel and GraphQL request. First, let's begin by installing the dev dependencies that we'll need throughout this project. We'll install the GraphQL CodeGen CLI, then we'll install the GraphQL TypeScript plugin, and we'll install the TypeScript Operations plugin. Finally, the plugin that we'll be using today is the Type Document node. We'll also need to install GraphQL, Apollo Client, Urkel, GraphQL Request, and CrossFetch. Now inside the root of my project, I'm going to create the file codegen.yml. Then inside of here, I'm going to define the schema for my project. I'm going to be using an existing hosted GraphQL shopping cart API that we can run some queries against. Then let's define the documents glob. And here we'll specify that we want to look for any file instead of any folder that ends with the file extension .graphql. Then using the generates keyword, we can generate a new types.ts file. We here want to specify all of the different plugins that we want to run against our documents to generate this file. We'll specify TypeScript, TypeScript operations, and we'll use typed document node. Now inside of package.json, let's include a new script to run our GraphQL code generator. Now, if we run the GraphQL code generator at this point, well, we won't see any output, and that's because we have no GraphQL documents. So let's begin by creating a new file called getCartById.graphql. And inside of here, we want to create a new GraphQL query. We'll give the operation a name, pass in, in a variable, and we'll call the query card, pass in the ID. We'll fetch the ID from the response as well as the total items and the subtotal formatted and raw amount. We can also fetch other fields such as is empty. And I encourage you to check out the API to learn about all of the other different fields if you're following along. Now all we need to do is run npm run code gen. And if you pay attention to the right hand side, we should see a new file is generated, types.ts. This file contains all of the TypeScript signatures that match the GraphQL schema that I provided in the config. If we scroll to the bottom of this file, we can see that we have get caught by query variables, get caught by ID query, and then we have the get caught by ID document. And this is the type document node. If we format this, we can see that this contains the EST for our document node, and it exports the correct generics for document node. So we pass in the data, get caught by ID query, and the variables. Let's now take a look at using the type document node with Apollo client. Let's go ahead and import fetch from cross fetch. We'll also port Apollo client from Apollo client. We'll fetch along the in memory cache and the HTTP link. Then let's go ahead and import get cart by ID document from our generated types file. Then we'll go ahead and instantiate a new Apollo client instance. Then using the client, we can pass client dot query. And for the query, we can see here that query accepts a document or a type document node. Where you may have previously run a query inside of template literals here, you no longer need to do this with the type document node. We can get full end to end type safety by passing in the type document node, get caught by a D document. Now, if we begin to type the variables, we can see here that we can see that we need to pass ID and it's of the type string. Then on the promise, we'll fetch data and we'll log this to the console. And thanks to the generics that we've passed to the type document node, we can see in the response here that we've got access to all of the different fields that are returned from the GraphQL query. And I know what the types are. We can also see what fields are nullable and non-nullable. Now, if I run npm start, this will execute the index.ts file. And we can see here that we successfully executed a query against our GraphQL API using the type document node. Let's take this a step further by exploring what this looks like with Urkel. We'll import create client from Urkel. And we'll import again our get document by ID from our generated types file. And then we'll instantiate a new Urkel client. And we'll pass cross fetch to the fetch option. Then we'll call client.query. And we can see here in parentheses that we can pass a query string, document node, or a type document node. And we can see for the type document node that it accepts generics for the response, any and an empty object. 
Well, we already have that predefined using the get card by ID, which comes with its own generics. So we'll pass get card by ID document. And for the variables, we can see here that this also accepts an ID of type string. Then with Urkel, we'll call to promise. And just like before, we log to the console data and we can call dot card. And we can see all of the available fields that are in our type document node. Now, if we run npm start, we see that we have a successful API call using Urkel. Now let's explore using this with GraphQL request. I'm gonna instantiate a new GraphQL request client. We'll pass in the endpoint. And then for options, we'll pass in our custom cross fetch function. Because GraphQL request at this point doesn't work with the type document node, we'll need to tell it a few things such as the generics when we create the query. And thankfully the GraphQL code generator exported get caught by ID query variables and the query itself. So we can use these as the generics that we pass to our client with GraphQL request. Now we can call client.request and we can pass to request the generic for what our data returns as and the variables. So here we'll pass get caught by ID query. And for the second argument variables, we'll pass get caught by ID query variables. Then we can pass the get caught by ID document. And for the second argument, we can see here that we have ID. If I remove the generics and update the response to return the card, we can see here that we don't have any type safety. If I add the generics back and we go back to cart, we can now see that we have those successfully passed through to our response. Now, if we run npm start, it will make the same request as it did before. So hopefully this has shown you that type document node gives you the ability to change your GraphQL client without having to reconfigure code generator or install additional tools. Type document node reduces the boilerplate types generated for the typical use query, use mutation hooks that GraphQL code generates with plugins such as React Apollo. Type document node uses generics to send the shape of the data and variables that give a greater developer experience when working with the responses.